Hey guys, it's Alexandra from creationcrochet.com and yarncraftsandcoffee.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make a really fun and cozy ear warmer worked in your favorite lightweight number three yarn and this textured pattern here that resembles the even berry stitch. This ear warmer here is part of my 2024 mystery ear warmer crochet along that I'm hosting on my Creation Crochet blog. This particular stitch pattern is from my Little Pebble series. And as I mentioned, it is a modified even berry stitch. So I absolutely love that stitch pattern, but I find that when I work the traditional even berry stitch, the little pebbles here, that's what I like to call them, they don't hold their shape that well, and sometimes the pebble part flattens out. So I have modified it using a combination of single crochet and treble crochet to get the same exact pattern, but the stitches hold their shaping really well. So this is the lightweight version. It is worked in a tube. We work a really long rectangle and then we whip stitch the ends together here. I do have a worsted weight version worked exactly the same way and I have a worsted weight version that has a twist in the center worked in the same basic rectangle but finished a little bit differently. So if you would like to have this twisted finish in the lightweight yarn, you can reference that video when it comes to finishing it. I'm going to pop the links to all these things down in the description box below, including my materials. This yarn right here is called Lion Brand Superwash Merino. That is a 100% merino wool yarn. Acrylic yarn is also going to work for this. Another animal fiber that you may want to try if you're allergic to wool is alpaca. You'll find some alternatives listed in the description box as well. The main thing to consider when you're picking out your yarn is going to be where you're going to be using your ear warmer. Animal fibers are going to be the best choice if you're somewhere where it's really windy as the animal fiber is going to help protect you against the wind, it's going to keep you the coziest. Acrylic yarn works for cool weather, but when it comes to the wind, it sometimes goes right through. So I do have ear warmers in my personal collection where I use both fibers and then I just pick different ones depending on if I'm going to run errands or if I'm going to go on a trolley ride. One thing I want to point out about working with this yarn. This yarn is so soft and it's so plushy and it just feels really lovely. Part of that plushiness comes from it not being spun that tight and because of this as we work, the yarn strands start to pull apart. You can kind of see it up here where I have the stitch coming from my loop. The strands start to become really loose here up at the top. I can actually see in between the three strands there. So as I'm working my stitch here, I'm just being careful so that I don't split any of it as I'm pulling my yarn through these stitches here. And I'm just going slow. So just be aware that you can experience some splitting here because the strands are very loosely put together. See here I just split this part. But I'm just going slow so that the yarn doesn't really catch. This is going to be something that's going to happen to crocheters but it's not necessarily going to happen to knitters. It has to do with the direction that we work in as crocheters. They spin some yarn in a certain direction that works better for knitters. So I still really like this yarn for crocheting. It makes a really beautiful fabric. Great stitch definition, really soft, really plushy has a nice stretch to it, but also a nice drape to it. So a beautiful yarn, just something to be vigilant as you're working that you might experience some splitting. As far as gauge goes, this ear warmer is worked with Weiss here, where we're building the height of the ear warmer. So after about six rows, you can measure the width and you'll know how tall your ear warmer is going to be. If you wanted to adjust that, then you could do that by working less stitches or more stitches. Then you'll continue working the entire length of the ear warmer so that it is two to two and a half inches smaller than your head circumference. And your head circumference is measured around your head just above your eyebrows. 
I will provide instructions for toddler, child, and adult sizes based on the average size, but measuring your head circumference is going to be how you pick out the ear warmer that's going to fit you the best. Two inches smaller will be a comfortable loose fit. Two and a half inches smaller will give you a really cozy fit like a hug. That's the way that I like to wear mine. So going back with wise, you're going to be able to adjust really easily after working just six rows up and you can see how tall it's going to be. There is a little bit of wiggle room there as it just needs to be tall enough to cover your ears. The length is what's important, so you are gonna to wanna to have a soft tape measure handy so that you can measure your finished rectangle before we whip stitch it closed to ensure that it's going to fit. If it's measuring smaller or larger than the measurements I'm providing, then the finished ear warmer may not fit correctly. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with a slip knot, so I've pulled the yarn over my fingers here wrap it around my index finger two times, hold the tension with my thumb and my middle finger, then I'll pull the loop on the left up over the other one but not off my finger, then I'll go to the one on the left now, pull it up over the other one and off my finger. Grab my crochet hook, insert it into the loop on my finger and pull it off, then I'll hold the working yarn in my right hand and the short tail end in my left. I'm going to pull that so this knot will go to normal tension. We're going to start with a chain. To chain, we yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Each time we do that, we get one of these V-shapes here. We don't count the loop on our hook. We have one, two, three chains. Now I'm going to put up a chart that's going to show how many chains you're going to want to have depending on the size that you're working. The number of stitches that you're going to have is going to be equal to one less than the number of chains that you have. So if you have a chain 12, you're going to have 11 stitches. If you decide to adjust this at all, you're going to want to make sure that you start with an even number of chains so that you get an odd number of stitches. Once we have all our chains complete, we're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So again, we don't count the loop that's on our hook. There's our first chain and our second chain. Right in the center of that second chain, that's where we're going to work a single crochet. So I'll insert my hook in the center of it, yarn over, and pull through. I have two loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. And that completes our single crochet. Now we're going to treble crochet into the next stitch. That's also called a triple crochet. Yarn over two times. So there are three loops on your hook. Insert your hook into the center of the chain. Yarn over and pull through. There are now four loops on your hook. Yarn over pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. That completes our treble crochet and to get it to the same height as that single crochet and have it pop out to create that texture, we single crochet into the stitch after it. So insert your hook right into the center of the next chain, yarn over and pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. I'll pull up a loop here really quick and now that treble crochet is going to pop out here and it's going to create that little bobble that we have on the front. It's a little bit hard to see now because we just have that one but as you keep building and adding the rows the texture is really going to come together. So throughout the whole entire pattern when you're working this row you're going to be working a single crochet followed by a treble crochet and then repeat single crochet, treble crochet, all the way until you get to the end and you always finish with a single crochet. So right now we have single crochet, treble crochet, single crochet. We're going to work a treble crochet in that next chain. Yarn over two times. Insert your hook right in the center of that chain. Yarn over and pull through. Four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Single crochet into the next chain. Insert right into the center. Yarn over and pull through. Two loops on your hook. 
yarn over and pull through both loops, treble crochet into the next stitch, yarn over two times, there are three loops on your hook, insert right into the center of the chain, yarn over and pull through, four loops now, yarn over, pull through two loops, before I continue, as I move up, I do like to hold on to the part of the stitch I just finished so that it doesn't pull up on the initial loop from my hook. So I just finished the yarn over and pull through two loops. Now I'm going to move my fingers from the bottom chain up to the first part there. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Hold on to the fabric here in my right hand so I can move my left hand up a little bit more. And then yarn over and pull through two loops. That way these loops are even in size, otherwise this initial loop will just start to get larger and then it'll make your fabric look messy. So if this stitch starts to pull out of shape, then I recommend pulling out your fabric and reworking the stitch. So if that loop was way too long, then I would just pull my hook out, pull out on that last stitch, and then reinsert my hook into the loop and rework that treble crochet again. Then we single crochet into the next stitch and that's what brings it down so that it's even with the single crochets. Continue working in pattern all the way to the end in that very last stitch and with a single crochet. Now that I've reached the end of my row, if you'd like to count your stitches, you look to the V shapes here that are on the back side. That's gonna be the easiest side to see them from. Right here at the top, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. The treble crochet V shapes are gonna be a little bit bigger than the single crochet ones next to it. To start the next row, we're going to chain one and turn. Now we're looking at the front textured side. Each time we work from this side of the fabric, we're just going to single crochet all the way across. Insert your hook into the very first stitch there, picking up both loops of that single crochet. Yarn over and pull through. Two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through to complete that single crochet. Then you insert into the next stitch, which is a treble crochet, and the stitch sort of falls to the back. So it's right here at the top, rotating a little bit to the back so that I can see the V shape and pick up both loops, and then complete a single crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch, which is really easy to see there. And then single crochet into the next treble crochet. Rotate it just a little bit so that you can see where to insert your hook to pick up both loops of that V-shape. Single crochet into the next single crochet. And then single crochet into the next treble crochet. Go to the top of it, rotate a little bit, and then you'll see where to insert your hook to pick up those two loops and you just continue all the way across the row, single crocheting into each stitch. So you're gonna have the same number of stitches in this row as you did in row one. They're just going to be all single crochets. And after we work into that very last single crochet, we've completed our row. Now we're going to go back and work another textured row chain one and turn. Each time you're looking at the flat side, that means we're working from the back and we're going to be working the textured row. So we're going to start with a single crochet into this very first stitch. Then we're going to work a treble crochet into the next stitch. Now you see that my stitch has pulled out kind of long there. I don't like that, so I'm gonna rework that one. Pull it a little bit tighter.
single crochet into the next stitch, treble crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch, treble crochet into the next stitch. Continue in pattern all the way across, single crochet into the next stitch, treble crochet into the next stitch. When you get to the end of the row, you will end with a single crochet in that very last stitch. Once we have all our stitches complete here, we're ready to chain one and turn. And now we're looking at the textured side, so that means we're going to be working a row of single crochet. Single crochet into the first stitch, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way across, the same way as we did before, ending with a single crochet in the last single crochet. And this is how our repeat is going to continue. So after we single crochet all the way across, we'll chain one and turn, and we'll be looking at the flat side or the back side, which means that we know we're going to work a textured row after that, which is single crochet in the first stitch, treble crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, treble crochet in the next stitch, all the way across, working a single crochet in the very last stitch. Then you'll chain one and turn, and you'll be on the textured side again, which means that you are single crocheting into each stitch all the way across. Now I've completed six rows here. Down here at the bottom, the textured row, that is row one. And above that, we can see another textured row. We know that that has worked from the same side, so that is row three. And then there's a small row here in the middle that is row two, where we just work those single crochets. The easiest way to count your rows is going to be looking for the textured rows. So then you can count one, three, five, seven, and so on. After about six rows, you can lay this flat, measure from the edge of the left side all the way across to the edge of the right side. This is going to be the finished height of your ear warmer. So if you would like a thinner band, you can take out chains here and work less stitches. And for a thicker band, you can add chains and work more stitches. From the number of chains that I've provided, you would subtract or add in multiples of two. We want that beginning chain to be an even number so that we get an odd number of stitches. You're going to continue alternating those two rows, a row of the textured pattern and a row of the single crochet, until you get the length that you want for your ear warmer. And you're going to end on an odd row, which is a row of single crochet. I'll go ahead and put up a chart now that shows how many rows you're going to want to have, depending on the size that you're working. Once you have all your rows complete, you're going to want to take time to measure. Lay it down flat, measure from the bottom edge all the way up to the top edge. You're going to want this length to be about two to two and a half inches smaller than your head circumference. If your measurement does not fall into that range, then the finished ear warmer may not fit correctly. So if you need to, you can work more repeats here to add length, or you can take out a couple rows if it's measuring too long. Just make sure that you finish on a single crochet row. Now that I have all my rows complete, I'm gonna go ahead and fasten off here with a longer than normal tail so that I can use it to sew these together. I'm going to go to this last loop here, pull it all the way up to break it, and then I'll grab my tapestry needle I'm going to thread this end into my tapestry needle. I'm going to do my whip stitching from the right side. You could do it from the wrong side too, it gives you a slightly different appearance here. 
but I'm going to go ahead and do it from the right side so that my panels lay the flattest together. The front side or the textured side at the top, I've just folded in both panels so it's in that tube shape already. Bringing the two ends together that I'm going to be seaming. I'm going to start by coming from the back, underneath, up, through that very first stitch. So which one is the first stitch? It can be a little bit tough to see here. But you're going to look for the stitch where the first treble crochet is worked into. And you know that's going to be the second stitch. So the one right before it is the first stitch from the back, underneath both loops of that V shape and then pull it through. Now I'm going to go from the top down through that last stitch that my tail end is coming out of from the front here to the back inserting underneath both loops of that last stitch and then pull through. Then I'm going to come up into the same stitch here on row one from the back to the front. And now I'm going to cross diagonally over to the left so that I can bring my needle down through that second stitch. Inserting from the front to the back, picking up both loops of that stitch on my needle all the way down and pull through. Now I'm going to come up from the back side in the second stitch on row one where that treble crochet is coming out of. From the back to the front, picking up both loops of the V shape as well. And pull through. Then I'll go back into that second stitch. This time I'm pulling my stitch up whereas before I pulled my stitch over to the left. From the top down, now I'll come up from the back side of that second stitch where the treble crochet is in row one, and bring this stitch diagonally over to the left, from the front to the back, into that next stitch picking up both loops of the V-shape on my needle when I push it through. That's the stitch where I work over diagonally to the left. Now I'm going to bring my needle from the back to the front in the next stitch of row one. And then come directly above me through that stitch there from the front to the back. So I always like to work two stitches into each stitch. One goes directly above me and then one goes diagonally over to the left. So I've worked one stitch here upward. Now I'm going to come through row one here and work diagonally over to the left. That's the second stitch that goes with row one. Then I'll roll this treble crochet back, come from the back side into that next stitch of row one, go up first, back into that same stitch of row one, and then go diagonally over to the left. Through the next stitch of row one, go up first, back into that same stitch of row one, diagonally over to the left. And that's how I'm going to continue my whip stitch all the way across here to the end. I've worked the first part in this last stitch and now I'll go back into that top stitch. And you see that where my panels meet here, it's a little bit rounded on the edge. I'm going to correct that when I weave in this initial tail end, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. 
I'm just going to go ahead and flip to the back side and I'm going to weave in this end along the bulkiness of the seam that I just created here. When I enter and exit, I'm not going to pick up the whole entire stitch on my needle. Instead, I'm going to insert my needle into the center of it to break it in half, and that's going to help capture my yarn better. I'm inserting into a nearby stitch here, breaking it in half, and then I'm going to run up through several stitches vertically, breaking the last stitch in half when I exit. Hold on to the fabric in between my fingers and then pull the needle through. Give it a tug. Use my fingers to manipulate the fabric if I need to if the fabric has bunched up. We want it to lay naturally. Then I'll rotate my fabric, inserting into a nearby stitch here, breaking it in half, running back through several of those same stitches I just worked into breaking my last stitch in half when I exit. Hold on to the fabric in between my fingers, pull the needle through, give it a tug, manipulate the fabric if I need to. And I like to do three passes, that's my magic number. If you feel comfortable after two, you can fasten off. If you feel like you need to work a fourth one, you can do that too. Into a nearby stitch, breaking it in half, up through several of those same stitches, breaking the last stitch in half when I exit. Hold on to the fabric here, pull through, give it a tug, manipulate the fabric, and then I'll fasten off. Now I'll go ahead and thread that initial tail end I'm going to come back to the right side facing and I'm going to create a V shape here on the end, very similar to how you see here at the end of other rows. I'm going to bring my needle from the back to the front through the side edge of row one here on the right side. So when I come up, it's actually going to be through the middle of the chains here right in the center of that top edge and pull through and then down through the corresponding stitch here on the left side which is not where the treble crochets are but before that right underneath that's the row of single crochets and pull through now with the first pass we created this leg here on the top and the second pass we created a leg on the bottom which sort of creates this V shape here. Give it a tug and then manipulate it so that it measures in length the same as everything else. And that'll fill in that gap right there. Now I'll flip to the back, weave this in vertically into the bulkiness here. Same exact process. And now our ear warmer is seamed up. Flip it to the other side. I'll have this as the front of my ear warmer and I'll keep the seam at the back and it's ready to wear out. Guys, thanks so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed this one, please make sure to smash that like button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel while you're there. Pop down into the description box below to find the link to the written pattern as well as other ear warmer tutorials. And I'll catch you guys next time.